Hi everyone, it's Julia here and I'm checking in this morning I'm just to do a short video because I realise so much has happened on this trip in Cambodia that I probably haven't been recording enough of it. So I thought I'd hop in and just say what we've done in the last couple of days. So yesterday we left the first resort that we were at um, near it was Angkor Village, very close to the UNESCO World Heritage Temple area of Angkor Wat and the other temples. And um, we left there and we, uh, actually that was two days ago, and we did a homestay in the forest. And it was a traditional Cambodian house on stilts. We all slept in one room, um, beautiful wooden floors, wooden ceilings. There were fans, so they kind of accommodated for Westerners. Um, and it wasn't as basic as we thought. A lot of us were worried about sleeping on a bamboo mat in a hall with no fan at all. There was a fan, we each had a mattress, a pillow, blanket and mosquito net and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I did a live right after there where we had done a circle, a, a group share where we'd each gone around and I was quite emotional because um, it was really, really uh, beautiful to hear the shares of some of the people and I felt that I was able to share more openly than I had at any other time on the trip. Um, I had had a couple of conversations with people beforehand but I was really able to say my story to the whole group in that moment and since that share I think a lot of people have come up and I've had, had conversations with me because they kind of understood something about my family and background I've had and then they've shared more about themselves so I've had some really genuine interactions with people since doing that share and since listening to them I mean I'm not the only one who has family in this part of the world maybe not maybe nor have Cambodia but there are people here of Vietnamese origin uh, there are people here whose families have been through war they know what it's like to go through that kind of trauma so that was a really powerful night and all of us sleeping in one room and no one really got a shower for 24 hours but you know it was so luxurious it was fine and then we um, came to this new resort which is absolutely lovely I'm going to sort of spin around and show you there's a bit of background noise because the pool pump is going in the background so you can see there absolutely beautiful so I'm just taking uh, advantage of the early morning sun and some quiet time before people arrive in the pool and before we start for our day. So yesterday on the way to this hotel we stopped at um, the memorial in Siem Reap for victims of the Holocaust the Khmer Rouge and I was deeply affected but to me I think it's, it was mild, that memorial was mild compared to what I might be seeing in Phnom Penh and other people have sort of confirmed that and said yeah that's a good place to start and then you know the one in Phnom Penh is pretty graphic. What I found though was um, after the share at the homestay I couldn't sleep straight away that night so I went and sat on the steps looking out to the jungle. It was absolutely beautiful. You could hear frogs and animals and wow the centipedes are so enormous it's like um yeah you're in the thick of the forest. I felt so connected with nature and I did a little meditation where I thought the sadness of my family's story came up and I thought okay what would I say in this moment to Pooh and Bop and Tony's mum and dad, Pooh and 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 Tony, my adopted brothers and sisters, what would I say to their mum and dad if they were still alive and I were meeting them? And I thought, I'd never thought of the feeling or the trauma from that perspective before. And I thought, I would say to them, your, your kids are doing fine. They're just great. You should be so proud. They've got great lives. They've got families of their own now. And you did the right thing getting them out of Cambodia safely. You should be very, very proud. And wherever you are, I hope you know that I'm sure they already do I'm sure they're in a better place but it actually freed me a lot to have that conversation and see it as a dialogue with them rather than I was seeing this as a group trauma of the family and well I had a really soft heart space after that and I think that really helped me going into the uh, war memorial in Siem Reap because I was affected that day but I probably 
did better than I thought because I'd had a chance, I'd had a quiet moment the night before to clear some emotion. So what happened when I went to the War Memorial was I, I thought it was okay, but then I really did start crying and I found the best way to deal with that was to go into the Buddhist pagoda next door, uh, buy some incense off the old lady there and make an offering and just pray and do my mantra. I just prayed. I thought, you know, the hardest thing for our families, we don't actually know what happened and where our family members ended up. Where, they, where was their last resting place on earth in that, that, that war? And maybe we don't want to know. Maybe it's better not to know. So I thought, each place that we visit, I'm just going to say a prayer and send it out to them so that wherever they are, and they, as I said, they are in a far better place now than, than when they left the earth. So wherever they are, they just hear that prayer. And that actually helped calm me down a lot. So that was yesterday. As I said, it's probably a mild introduction to what I might be seeing if I go to the War Memorial in Phnom Penh and the Killing Fields. I'm still debating whether I do that full trip. I am here, I think I do want to, but it may be pretty confronting. So then we came here yesterday and we all chilled out in the pool. We had a bit of R&R. &R. Uh, we had a, a little group therapy session where we got to clear our feeling using beautiful technique, self-directed healing, and then we had a group meeting last night to prepare us for what we're about to go into today, which is where, in about an hour's time, we're going to all be catching tuk-tuks to Sunrise Village in Siem Reap, and we'll be meeting the kids for the first time, or it'll be my first time, probably half, half of the entrepreneurs on this trip will be meeting the kids for the first time, and half have done it last year or previous year. So I'm really uh, excited but also nervous. Uh, as I said to Liz, who, who's organised this, I'm so happy that she scheduled a few days beforehand of activities for us to get to know each other and to also unwind. And also that I got a chance to go to a war memorial and show my respect. So I feel like today I want to put my story down, put that behind and really be fully 100% present for the kids and for the present day Cambodia because these kids have come from horrific backgrounds and whilst the war was really terrible and you kind of have to understand it to know why present day Cambodia is the way it is, these children were born long after it. That, that was stuff that occurred 40 years ago. These children have been born much more recently the war has affected, or the aftermath of the war has affected their lives, but they were not part of it. So I really want to be present to what is modern day Cambodia and what are the kids going through, um, and just be 100% present to the experiences that arise today. We have been warned that it could be quite emotional, um, and it's great. We've got a psychologist on the trip with us who ran through some grounding techniques and techniques to help you know, centre ourselves if our own reactions come up in trauma because the last thing we want to do is, you know, uh, break down in front of the kids. They might not understand it. They might think that there's something they've done wrong or get confused. So we really want to be able to manage our own behaviour so we, we present a really positive front and show them, you know, we're here to care. We're here to uh, show them an alternative to life I'm going to come back in the sun. I'm chasing the sun here. Um, <laughs> so it's on my face, but not too hot. It's pretty hot today, even though it's relatively early in the morning. So we're here to show them an alternative of life. Uh, you know, some of the kids really haven't known a lot else before they got to sunrise. And I know that we can't change their lives in three days that we're running the workshops, or four days, or five days. I know that that's not that's a task that's a lifetime's worth, it's monumental. But what we can do is just provide them with an alternate, shining example of how you can live your life, especially the girls, because you know this is still a traditional culture in some ways and they may have very traditional roles expected of them. And some of these girls, you know, they may go on to be the sole breadwinner of their family. They may actually have to break out of some of those stereotypical roles and 
think of another way of living their lives. So, you know, I'm really excited. There's a lot of women on this trip. So, yeah, I'm going to stand up so the light's a bit better. And um, I'm looking forward to it. So, as I said, I'm a little nervous. I've not really been to an orphanage of this size and this, um, you know, I've not really been to an orphanage before, to be honest. And I've not really done what we're about to do, but I'm with a great team of people. I feel inspired. I'm going to put my best foot forward, put my 100% uh, you know, present moment awareness hat on and just try to be as present and aware and as motivated as I can for the kids. So, yeah, thank you for listening. I thought I would check in and just do this video to fill you in on where we've been and what we've done up to this day. And I will hopefully get time, I'll make time actually, for more videos later in the week. Bye.